Yeah. Friday T Squad, it's me, Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade BMF Season 2, Episode 9 review. I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is meant for entertainment purposes only and not to be taken seriously or literally, meaning my jokes. So if that works for you, let's get into this review. Episode 9 begins with Meech and Terry having a conversation about the. 500 keys they have coming in and how they need to go down to Freaknik in Atlanta to find new lieutenants so they can get this product off. But outside of that, Terry wants to get rid of B Mickey or at least leave him down there in Atlanta because he knows that Detective Bryant is going to come after him and they don't need that type of heat on them, period, with them trying to expand their business. But Meech doesn't want to kill him because that's not what they do, first of all. But he does consider leaving B. Mickey down there in Atlanta, you know, because he really looks at him like a brother, like he does not want to harm him or hurt him. But he knows deep down inside that dude is bad for business. And that point is proven as they're driving down to Atlanta in their Corvettes and he receives a phone call from Detective Bryant asking, was it his idea or B. Mickey's idea to break in his house? And Meech was basically like, F you nigga, get off my phone. I ain't got time for this. Peace out. I'll talk to you later. Back in Detroit, Detective Bryant ends up putting the gun that B. Mickey used to kill old boy in season one in a new safe. And his son, Kevin, comes in and was like, he wants to know, does his father think that it was his bully from school that broke into the house and tried to do something to him? But his daddy was like, no, nah, I don't think that he would go that far. Um... And Kevin was like, well, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> like, he does not want to go. But his daddy ends up talking him into going because, you know, poor little dude done already been getting beat up, getting his shoes taken. Now he fearing that this boy is just, like, bigger and badder than life and breaking into his house. Polar baby don't know what to do. So Kevin goes to school but ends up leaving early and going down to the station. And one of the detectives was like, you know, you know where Brian is to Detective Jen. And she was like, he's off doing whatever. And so she was like, I got it. So the little boy sit down and tell her, you know, he thinks that the little boy from school was the one that broke into their uh, house. And she was like, oh, I didn't know that there was a break in. Like, she don't know none of this, you know, because mind you, she told Detective Brian to be honest with her moving forward, you know, with them being partners. She need to know what's the deal, like what is going on. And so the little boy was just like, you know, uh, my daddy got a new safe and this, this, that, and the third. And so this guy, Detective Jens, you know, engines running like, what is going on that he wouldn't tell me that somebody broke into his house and why would he need a new safe? So now she realizing that he being on some sneaky stuff again when Detective Bryant ended up walking up and was like, Kevin, what you doing here? And he was like, I don't feel safe at home or at school. I want to move back in with my mama. And he was like, you know, I thought, you know, we supposed to be strong. And he was like, look, you sign a seal of honor, the oath of honor, whatever, to protect people. But you don't want to protect me. Like, you just want me to be so hard and so tough. Step up as a daddy and protect me. So he was like, all right, I'll call your mama or whatever. And the little boy just looked at him like, can you, like, show me, like, that you, like, are here to protect me? Like, you're like the biggest person in my life like you're like a superhero for me and you're an officer and you're you can't even keep me safe like what kind of daddy is you <laughs> he then see jen ask him about the break-in and he lies to her face saying that he thinks that it was the little boy from the school and stuff as well and so she plays along for the moment like oh okay all right but now she knows for sure that he's lying and keeping secrets from her again so that night she ends up going over to detective Brian's house because she knew that Kevin wasn't gonna be there she knew that he was be at his mama house so she came over there with her hair down baby and her skirt on trying to be sexy but to me she just looked like a stale piece of tilapia <laughs> like the actress that plays this character was like considered one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood I don't know what happened like I don't know if she just looked this dowdy for the role but I need to see her outside of this role because she used to be a baddie but anywho, so she go over there and hike that skirt up and they smash again. And then after she done put them to sleep, she sneak up out the bed 
and goes into his closet to snoop around to see if she can find this safe. But she ends up finding B. Mickey's hospital bracelet that she saw on him, you know, earlier. And so he was like, what you doing? You looking for something? She was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm looking for uh, another cover. I got cold. He was like, well, come back to bed. I'll warm you up. So she ends up stuffing the um, hospital bracelet in her drawers and get back into the bed with him. And so now she knows for sure that he is still up to no good when it comes to this B. Mickey situation and that he's shutting her out once again. Then the next day at work, she gets... um paperwork faxed in basically showing her that detective Bryant still had been working with B Mickey and that he was the one that sent B Mickey's mother to a different healthcare facility. And that's where she ended up dying and she confronts him about it. And he tells the truth finally. And she was like, look, this is strike two for you. You lie to me again, homeboy, we going to have issues, but she promises to keep this information between you know, the two of them, like she not going to go and squeal to they boss or whatever, but she is side eyeing him and I would be side eyeing him too. I don't even understand why he get another chance. Like girl, the Dick ain't that good. He ain't even that cute. Well, he ain't cute to me at all. Neither one of y'all are attractive. So I guess that, that makes sense child. But yeah, he, he didn't lie too many times and to your face and keeping important information away from you. So, like, he wouldn't get no more chances with me. Minuteman, Charles, <laughs> Nicole, and Lucille are all at the crib when there's a knock at the door. And so, Charles gets up to go answer it. And Lucille was like, uh-uh, I got it. And she came down in her gold LeMe jumpsuit, baby, dressed and ready to go on the night uh, for a night on the town. So, she opens the door, and it's another, none other than Pastor Swifter. And she was like, I'm about to go out tonight. Um, and he was like, what time are you going to be back? And she was like, I'm grown. I ain't got no curfew. See ya. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> and so she ends up leaving and going out on a so-called date with Pastor Swift. And I'm like, out of all the people you could have chose to try to make Charles jealous, you going to go out with Pastor Swift? Child, I would have laughed. I would have been like, girl, you got to do better. You should have uh, called up one of me homies. <laughs> that would have really got him mad. Call up one of the homies, honey, and have one of them little niggas take you out. That's what you should have did. Charles would have had a fit, a whole fit. So Lucille and Pastor Swift go out to dinner, him and his pushback hairline, and she's telling him all about her struggles with, you know, Charles cheating and all of this stuff. And she was like, you know, if I ever find out who this floozy is, I just might kill her. And he was like, oh, I know you had a little wicked in you. You know what I'm saying? And so he ends up coming on to her, rubbing her thigh. And she was like, uh-uh, 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 past the holy whore. You are not getting none of this, Punani. That is not what we're here for. I came to you to get the word, not to be laying on my back, trying to get my back cracked. Uh-uh, sir. So when he realized he ain't getting none, baby, the check come and he was like, uh-uh, you can take this back and split it right down the middle. <laughs> And Lucille realized that ain't none of these niggas worth shit. Like, ain't none of them. None of them. Even the pastor. And I was like, girl, I could have told you that. Another day, we see Lucille at the crib. She's still stewing in misery and just sad over the fact that this man done cheated on her. She can't eat. Nicole trying to get her mama to eat child. And she just like, I can't eat nothing. And she was like, mama, you got to take care of yourself. Like, you got to eat something. And she was like, oh, you know, baby, thank you so much. You know, Nicole just so sweet. She just want everybody to get along. Why can't we all just get along, child? So then it's a knock on the door and Lucille goes to the door and it's none other than that scallywag Mabel. So she come by to bring back the skillet that she borrowed and Lucille was like, oh girl, thank you. Let me talk to you real quick. Girl, you know, Charles been cheating on me. And she was like, oh really? Oh my God, Lucille. Oh my God. And I'm like, you fakers, helper. And so she was, Lucille was just like, I don't know what, you know, was going on. I don't know why he would do this. And she started crying. And Mabel then goes into her purse to give her some tissue. And when she goes into her purse, you know how you pulling stuff out. She ends up pulling out a matchbook from the Easy Bake Hotel, honey. And Lucille looked down. And that matchstick said, yeah, girl. <laughs> and Lucille said, you show sure right all. Oh. And so she was like the Easy Bake Oven Hotel. 
That's the same place that Charles took his side piece. So it was you this whole time. And she was like, that's why I cut it off, uh, Maeve, I mean, Lucille, because I knew it was wrong. And da 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 da. And Lucille was like, you know what? <laughs> I said, if I found out who it was, I was going to kick her tail. But you know what? I'm going to let you pass, son. I'm going to let you pass because I'm a Christian woman and I ain't with that lifestyle no more. But if you ever. Ever, 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 come near me or my family again. I'm going to put this skillet upside your forehead, okay? All right? And she let her go. And I was like, see, nah. The, that Christian should have came up out of uh, Lucille in this moment. She should have at least backhand her. Something pulled that wig off. Something like she needed to get hers. So I'm hoping now that because Nicole was sitting on the steps when all of this was being said. So hopefully Nicole and her little friends or something pull up on Mabel or do something sideways to her because she she got to pay. She can't get off with that. Like that's a whole violation. Like me and you was cool. You to sit down at my table. You borrowing my good cast iron skillet. And you to bought my husband. Oh, no, nah, girl. And you want to sit up in my face and act like you ain't do it? Nah, she needed to get a two-piece to the dome. Nah, she couldn't get off that easy. So then Charles come running down the steps after Lucille then broke his guitar. Oh, he came running in. And she was like, uh, Mabel of all people? And he was like, I, I don't love her. I love you. And she was like, well, any shred of love I have for you is gone. You dirty dog, you. Then see sexy old Lamar. Lamar got a haircut, honey. Got some clothes. Got him some gold chains. He doing the dang old thing. He back outside. And he looking good, honey. Good, 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 good. Finger licking good. And so he goes to visit Mo at the crib. And he bring her a flower or whatever. And he give her a check for 30 G's for Zoe's college fund. And she just like, oh, my God, Lamar, $30,000. Oh, my goodness. And he was like, and I got something for you, too. And so he bring out a ring. And she was like, Lamar, Lamar, you are not about to propose to me. I know you're not. And he was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I know we was going to take it slow. But, you know, this is a promise that I'm going to be, you know, the man that you want me to be. And she was like, oh, my God, you making this so hard. Hard. oh my god and I was like girl why would you say that that was a sure tale that was a tale of all tales you know that's a tale uh a term in poker like girl you just told on yourself right then and there right then and there and he was like nah baby you know what I'm saying you know I love you I want to be with you and he was like and I got something else for you and he pulled out a baggie of that that that, that cocaina and her eyes really lit up she was like come on boy and I was like you crackhead you so they in the crib partying doing lines or whatever and you know she trying to get a little bit of that didn't and but you know he been having struggles with getting it up ever since he got his colostomy bag so she was like you know what i'm saying since the coke ain't helping me and my body ain't helping how about we take it up a notch and we do some crack <laughs> And Lamar was like, crack, I don't mess with that now. And she was like, come on, like, ain't nothing else helping to get you up, and I want something that didn't it. So he was like, I don't know, Mo. She was like, come on, babe, like, I'm, I'm, I promise you it's going to help. So she pull out the pipe and the rock or whatever, and he was like, you know, you first. And she was like, me first? No, nah, no, nah, this ain't about me. This about you. I'm trying to help you. And so he was like, nah, you first. Like, I know you ain't trying to play me, are you? And she was like, nah. So he make her smoke the pipe. And so she's smoking and she, <coughs> and he was like, I knew you was trying to play me. I knew you was trying to play me. Meech and you was trying to set me up. And next thing you know, he get to choking her out. And I was like, well, she took the pipe. <laughs> like what more you wanted to do to prove her love to you? Next thing you know, like I said, he choking her out. But Mo this time wasn't going out without a fight. She still remembered the last time. He hit her upside the head, baby. She need him in the crotch, honey. She stole on him several times, hit him over the head with the urn with Blackie's ashes in it. But he wasn't letting that neck go. He wasn't letting that neck go for nothing. And he ended up choking her to the point where she was unalive, child. It was R.I.P. Mo. R.I.P. Mo. She gone. She gone, y'all. She gone. What y'all gonna bring to the funeral? 
I'm going to bring some um, Lotta Body, some Spritz, some Marcel Irons, some Blue Magic Grease. That's what I'm going to bring. That's what I'm going to bring. Y'all let me know down below in the comment section what y'all going to bring to Mo's funeral. So now I'm like, what's going to happen with the kids? What's going to happen with Zoe? Is she going to end up staying with her grandmother? And then what's going to happen with her and Meech, baby? Like, is Meech going to end up raising their child by himself? Like, what's going to happen with that whole situation? And I can't wait to see what happens when he find out that she is deceased and gone, honey. So as soon as he unalived her... Lamar instantly knew that he messed up like he regretted it instantly but you know him and his crazy rage <laughs> went too far once again and so he called up his cousin to come help him cousin come over like I what do you want you already broke my tv you ain't paying me no rent what do you want Lamar I'm sick of you so he go in the house to find that Mo is dead to the bed and so he like, fool, what did you do? He was like, I messed up. I messed up. I went too far. And so dude was like, oh my God, like it's always something with you. So the phone ringing and he was like, don't answer it, Lamar. Don't answer it. But you know, you can't tell Lamar nothing. Lamar go running over to the phone because I think he thought that it was going to be Meech calling, but it wasn't. It, it ended up being Zoe. And so she was like, dad, he was like, yeah, baby. She was like, what you doing? Where my mama? And he was like, uh, she can't come to the phone right now. She busy. And so the little girl already knowing, like, my mama don't mess with you like that. Why are you answering the phone and why can't she come to the phone? So she already suspicious that some, some shit is going on. So he was like, you know, I love you, baby girl. And she was like, uh-huh, and hung up the phone. So the cousin was like, come on, like, pick her up so I can take her down to the funeral home and cremate her. And I was like, dang, that's how she going to go out? That's sad. Well, I'm figuring when Meech get back to Detroit and he can't get a hold of Mo and go over to the house and she's not there, he gonna end up talking to Zoe and tell Zoe that he she called home and Lamar was there. And that's how he gonna find out that, you know, um, he unalived Mo. He gonna put two and two together and realize that he done did something with a kidnapped or a killed her. Down in the ATL, Meech, Terry, and B. Mickey go to Goldie's house so they can try to get her to allow them to clean their money through one of her clubs. But she was like, <laughs> little niggas, that is something that you earn. I don't know y'all like that. Like y'all cute. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for the look, you know, package y'all brought me because they brought her down some, you know, some couple of hundreds. But she was like, nah, we not doing that. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> How you think I've been in the game that long? By being dumb? Absolutely not. But Meech put on the charm. And she then decides that, I right, I'm going to hook you up with one of my girls that's a real estate agent now. And here go B. Mickey saying some slick stuff about her, what you putting strippers through school or whatever. And so she already was looking at him like, who is this dude? Like, she got a bad feeling about him. Like, she did not like him. But she ended up checking him. And he was like, oh, my bad. You know, I ain't mean no disrespect. And she looking like, uh-huh. And Meech and Terry looking like, this nigga, her going to mess up everything. So Meech asked to go use the restroom. So he goes to the restroom room and on his way back it's the door open and he see this lady on the floor telling him some help help and so he's standing there looking like what the hell is going on and then immediately Goldie rushes past him and slams the door in his face and at first I thought she was on some weirdo stuff like kidnapping women or something like that holding them hostage or whatever but we end up finding out that the woman that was begging for help is actually her sister who is dying of AIDS and she's taking care of her and the sister just want to go like she just want to pass away because she don't like living the way that she's living cooped up in their room and just being in pain and sick all the time but Goldie like you know you just got to hold on the doctor's saying they gonna get a cure and everything we all know there's no cure but there is a lot of medication now that keeps you know HIV um and AIDS patients alive a lot longer but you know unfortunately during that time it was way bleaker way bleaker for people that contracted back then so it was really dope to see Goldie in a different light and I really love her character on this show I think Monique does a fabulous job and based off the way things went this season I feel like next season we will see her back and I hope hopefully we see her come back next season in a bigger role I would personally love to see a spinoff show about Goldie like I would love to see that love it after, you know, seeing that woman on the ground begging for help, Meech was like, yo, we got to go. <laughs> so they left 
And I don't know what they did with B. Mickey, but they got rid of him and him and Terry went to go visit Ty at his crib. And Ty live in large and in charge, big boy. So they link up with him and tell him that they trying to expand down there. And he was like, look, I can't have y'all, you know, trying to expand on my territory. But they was like, look, you know what I'm saying? We all going to eat. So he cool with it. Then his wife end up coming in the room. Her name was Deanna. And he ends up introducing them to his wife, who was played by Young Miami. And it was basically Young Miami playing herself, uh, <laughs> pretty much. And she ends up asking them, to, you know, do they want to stay for dinner? And they was like, yeah. So then later on that night, Meech was like, you know, you're going to hit up Magic City with us because that's the place that Goldie told them that, you know, um, her girl would be it. So uh, Deanna was like, y'all a bad influence or whatever, because he's a family man. Like he don't really do the clubs and all of that stuff. Like he's like to spend a lot of time with his family. But they was like, come on out with us or whatever. And so he was like, let me go out. And so she was like, all right. So he decided right then and there to go out with them. And I knew right then and there that something bad was going to end up happening. Mind you, when Meech and them was at Freaknik, he told these dudes that um, he ended up running into that was from Texas to meet them down at Magic City. Now, also that I forgot to mention, when they was at Freak Neek, they end up getting into it with these dudes and end up checking them because the dudes was, you know, being really aggressive with this girl or whatever. Get to Mag Magic City and it's lit, of course. And, you know, they can't bring no weapons inside. So B. Mickey tells Meech, like, I feel naked without my strap. And he was like, man, only strap you need is a Jimmy because you, know, you see all these bad bees up in here. And so one of the strippers played by Erica Pinkett from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta was like, I want you to meet. Like she she ready to put that thing on them, honey. So they end up going in the back and smashing. And after they get done having, you know, relations, he getting dressed, but his pants is still off. And she looked down at his Jimmy and she was like, uh, they need to call you Big Meech. And I was like, oh my God, that's how y'all gonna say this man got his name with Big Meech because of his Peter Weta. Okay, all right. And I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't put a prosthetic on Lil Meech. <laughs> Not to say that he ain't got the package, but I doubt that he would have felt comfortable showing his meat to the world. But who knows? It might have been his. I don't know. But Erica Pickett did a really good job. I would have liked to see Erica play Young Miami's character versus the stripper character. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Young Miami should have played the stripper character, to be honest with you. Harry and Meech end up sitting down with Goldie and her girl about, you know, the whole real estate situation and what type of houses they looking for or whatever. Because, you know, these are going to be their stash houses or whatever. So they set that up. and She was like, all right, I'm going to get to work on it. Terry end up walking off doing whatever. And so it's just Goldie and Meech. And so she explains to him what he saw earlier that day. And so, you know, he was like, dang, you know, I, I'm sorry. I know you go through a lot on a daily basis. And she was like, yeah, I do. So now they have an understanding. And I feel like an even closer bond now that he knows something so deep and dear to her. So, like I said, I really feel like next season we're going to see a lot more of Goldie and see Goldie and Meech's relationship really grow and expand. So while they in the club kicking it, we see the dudes that they got into it at Freak Nick across the room and they was like what them niggas doing here and they was like oh all right i bet so they go outside to go get their straps or whatever so when the club let out meet you them walking you know not even tripping not even knowing that they got smoke and dudes just get the busting on them so it's a shootout in the parking lot dudes get you know shot one of the dudes that end up getting shot in it of course was ty he ended up getting shot several times and end up dying on the Magic City parking lot. And they end up having to leave his body there. And we then see Meech have to go back to his crib and tell Deanna what happened. Now, mind you, she didn't want him to go out no way. So she, of course, is extra mad and pissed. And she was, she slapped the, the taste out of Meech's mouth and was like, I want whoever did this to my husband. And she was like, get out. <laughs> now, I think that Miami did good with the slap. 
and the yell. But when it came to the crying part, uh, no. It's like she needs a lot more coaching if she wants to do the acting thing. I think when it comes to comedic stuff, she does a great job. Like she did a great job in You People. But when it comes to the dramatic stuff, she got to work on it. She got to work on it because she is so Miami and her accent and everything. Like she going to have to work with a dialect coach, something. Meech was a uh, really apologetic and was like, I'm on, I'm gonna fix this. I got you. Da, 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 da. So we going to see if he keep his word. I really think that he will. And I know that they're going to end up getting retaliation against the dudes that end up killing Ty. Then after that, we see Terry and B Mickey on the rooftop of the building that Ty lived in. And Terry was like, you know, I ain't built for all this, you know, shooting and all of this type of stuff. Like, that ain't me. Like, I ain't used to all that. Like, you, you could do that. Like, this is what you used to, but I ain't used to it. And so, B. Mickey was like, is that why you tried to set me up? Because when they was at the club, he saw him talking to, you know, a hitter or whatever. And so, he was thinking that they was trying to set him up to get popped. And he was like, I saw you talking to a hitter in the parking lot. Y'all trying to uh f and kill me? Fuck you and that lame ass uh your lame ass brother. And I was like, oh no, no you didn't. The same man that's been sparing your life is f him. He a lame now. And remind you, they was not saying hitter, okay? In the nineties, all right, they was not like the whoever wrote that y'all messed up on that. But I was like, really, dude? Like he been sparing your life, helping you throughout this whole situation, and now it's f him. So little he pulled his gun out on um Terry. And Terry was like, yo, you tripping. And so next thing he know, Meech right behind him with his and was like, yo, <laughs> my brother? You gonna pull a gun out on my brother? And so Mickey was like, you know, I lie for you, I kill for you, and I still die for your punk ass. And Terry was like, Meech, shoot this nigga. <laughs> So me struggling with, you know, pulling the trigger and he can't do it. He was like, no, I'm not losing no more brothers. I'm not going to do that. And he was like, uh, we going to go directly at the MFers who's trying to tear our family apart. Talking about Bryant and Lamar. So, um, Terry ended up getting a, a phone call, a frantic phone call from Markeisha telling him that Boone been arrested. So he tell Meech, and Meech was like, good. Like, that's one less person we got to worry about and have competition with. He was like, no, it's not good because Brian got me and Markeisha on in pictures doing it. And if he shows it to Boom, Boom going to snap and go kaboom. <laughs> so Meech like, oh, God, something else. And then at the very end, we see Detective Brian and Jen um, celebrating because Boom the snitch child he just told everything about how meach and terry gotta connect with the colombians so now they back on top with with all the tea and the episode goes off child um so on next week's season finale episode we're gonna see them handling the mar situation detective bryant and b mickey because i strongly doubt that they're going to let that slide with him pulling the gun out on Terry I think that they gonna get rid of him but get rid of him in a way where they don't have to unalive him but uh rest in peace to Ty he was he was a baddie he was a cutie you know he could have got it for me <laughs> I would have been his side piece rest in peace Mo you was dumb and I got tired of your mushroom flips um but yeah it's good to see the, the guys expanding love Goldie's character love her um I want Lucille to boss up next season and overall, I'll give this week's episode of BMF, I'm going to give it an A because it was a lot of moving pieces in tonight's episode. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you all and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.